I don't know what all the mass hysteria and confusion is. Ivanka Trump is a cunt. Dies in your house. I guess I'm on American. Hey yo! What is the word, peeps? Welcome back into another action packed edition of Dies in Your House, where we ask that question every week Who's in the house? Dies in your house. What goes on, peeps? Don't mind the really low background music. We are guerrilla radioing it every gosh darn week here on Dies in Your House. The latest edition. Least Coast Radio for the least heard voices. Now, you might wonder, and I know I go through this a lot, you might wonder, hey Jay, listen, you have a podcast. Why are you doing another one? It's annoying, and we don't like you. And I get that. There's a lot of people that aren't fans of the pork stuff. I know, right? Crazy. But what I do is because things are so crazy. Fascism is rising. People are getting marginalized. Children get shot. People die in natural disasters and then numbers are fudged to make the country look better. There's a lot of stuff going on in America, and therefore, I needed more than one podcast. So the Jay Porks podcast is the main event. It is what we do every Monday. We get into big things with the Mueller probe. We investigate it. We, we, we do the thread count, where I go to the people I follow on Twitter, my intelligence folks, people I don't know personally, but people I know on the interwebs, people I follow on Twitter who have worked in intelligence before or strategic, you know, game theory type stuff. People smarter than me. National security people. People smart. People smarter than me. And what I do is I go, I go see them for all the info that I need. I don't go to Fox News. So this week, a lot of things going on, a lot of distractions going on. Who gives a crap about Roseanne, man? Who ca- That's a distraction. And when... When Roseanne is racist and gets her show canceled on Monday, I don't- Or Tuesday, I don't want to talk about that on Friday. Like, I turned on the news, they're still talking about Roseanne. There's- there's corruption running rampant in this regime. Do you see the pardons? Now, we're going to get into, on the Jay Porks podcast on Monday, we're going to get into exactly what these pardons mean. But, he's all of the people that are being pardoned are people that are committing crimes, who have committed the same crimes that people in 
the orbit of Trump have committed. So he's like, hey guys, don't worry, I'll pardon you. Now let me ask you another question. Don't, don't they usually wait to the end of their term to start pardoning people? Hope that's true. Because this stuff is getting deeper, folks. This stuff is getting way deeper, and there is no stopping. The only, there, well, there is stopping. There is one way to stop it, and it's not, it's not sitting down with Trump supporters, having tea, and talking about your differences. It's not police officers going into the inner cities and talking to the local drug dealers and trying to understand each other. That is not the way, none of that, writing letters, none of that's gonna work. Here's how we fix things. One way, vote. We're gonna go out there in November and we're gonna vote. And now summertime is coming up, which means if you don't have a job like me, I only got like seven days left of my job. So you know what? I'm looking to get on like the Cynthia Nixon campaign or something. So guys, get out there, volunteer, get some people to sign up to vote and stress the importance of voting. Because listen, we're young people, right? We're young. I mean, I know I'm 31 or whatever the hell I am, but like we're young people. We don't need assault rifles. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we're not interested in assault rifles, and we're not interested in weed being illegal. So we gotta get out there and vote. And we're not interested in our black friends going to jail, but our white friends getting off scot-free. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. These people, there are people out there that say, Oh, well, everything is racist nowadays, and that sarcastic tone. And it's like, yeah, well, how about, how about all of us white people band together and become slaves for a, for a couple of years maybe we'll do it for a month and we'll see how we like it and we'll see how that affects the psyche of our entire people you know what i'm saying so don't sit here and tell me that racism is over and if you think it's over not only you're wrong but i i have some suggested viewing for you there was a town hall on msnbc on tuesday night chris hayes chris hayes who is doing fun phenomenal work like second to Maddow on MSNBC right now in terms of like just killing the game Chris Hayes and Joy Reid who uh, conservatives are trying to you know make go away because they don't like her powerful views uh, they hosted a town hall called everyday racism in America and it was on the day that Starbucks closed their stores for half the day now Starbucks like listen I went into school and they're like oh I was like Starbucks is closing today and they're like oh man why I'm like you know for racism and oh, they rolled it you know some teachers aides rolled their eyes and I'm like listen you know nobody's saying that the problem is solved you know but what was this guy Howard Schultz gonna do you know I mean he had to he had to do something so is it solved no did they make big steps? Probably not. Did most Starbucks employees who aren't minorities probably go in there like, okay, I get a, I get paid for, you know, just listening to, watching a PowerPoint presentation. Whatever the case may be, at least they tried. At least they're trying. At least they're not sending racist ambient tweets at 2 a.m. Muslim Brotherhood. The thing, no. No, I'm backing off. I'm not getting into Rose. Not getting into it. But enough. I just want to read this headline to you. Because the other day I tweeted something. You guys know about Putin's Russia, right? Journalists. They get locked up and ki human rights get violated. Like all day or a day. So, like, journalists get killed there. You know what I'm saying? Like, they get locked up and imprisoned. They never get away. Opposition, people who oppose Putin, you know, don't live long. So, the other day, 
there was a story about this Russian. Well, he used to be a Russian. He used to work for. He defected to the Ukraine. He's like a Ukrainian spy or whatever. And he was on Putin's hit list. Putin was going to have him killed. And then the guy showed up dead in his hotel room. Shot in the head. Dead. That's Putin's world. I was going to say that's Putin's America. No, this is Putin's America. Kleptocracy is Putin's America. Trump is Putin's America. Arkady Babachenko. Babchenko, like, this guy was doing work, you know, against, you know, pro-Ukraine, against Putin. They killed him in his hotel room. In cold blood like a Truman Capote novel. So, I'm scrolling Twitter the other day. And the Associated Press has a story. Arkady Babchenko. Journalist. Ukrainian journalist. Believed to be dead. Shows up at press conference. What? What? He faked his death to escape the real death. He had to apologize to his wife. His wife grieved. Think about that. Think about thinking somebody's dead for a a month. It was a month that they were kept in the dark. A month. So like people are saying, huh? Got you, Putin. See, you thought you were going to kill that guy. And then he faked his death. And now everybody knows about it. No, 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 no. It's actually, it being a funny story doesn't mean that it, not, well, it's not funny, like, death isn't funny. But, like, it being a weird story is one thing, but this is not, this does not, you know, make things harder for Putin to kill people. You know what I'm saying? Now, anytime somebody on the Putin hit list shows up dead, they're just going to be like, oh, well... They faked it. How do you know he didn't fake his death? We'll find out in a couple of months if they're actually alive. It actually plays right into the Kremlin playbook. So, I don't know what the Ukraine was was thinking here. I mean, listen, if this guy was going to fake his death and disappear forever, that's one thing. You know, go, uh, what do they call that? Witness protection, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that'd be one thing, but that's not what it is. He faked his death. And he came out and he was like, hey, I faked my death to prove that Putin wanted me dead. And here I am alive. Like, it doesn't it doesn't fit into what we're trying to do here in the resistance. Like, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take these countries with the authoritarian dictatorships, the Putins, the Kim Jong-uns, the ones I can't pronounce from the countries I didn't know existed... All these people are like are like the, the mafia crime lords, right? New York crime families, you know? World, but, you know, New York is the example there. And, like, they are going down. We are not going to stand anymore for any of this. We run... The only thing... The only person... Who I want to hear saying we run this world is like Beyonce or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is you don't run these people just because they got all this money. Money leads to power. It's not like the song. You don't get respect out of that. And when you're somebody in power, people should respect you for the human being you are. Because the way you got elected is usually you did good things. I mean, besides now, where we have a career criminal. Somebody who literally has never went a probably more than two weeks of his life without committing a crime. Whether financial, whether sexual misconduct, whether walking into a Miss Universe locker room. Whatever it is, this man is a criminal. A fake billionaire bankrupt criminal and you people thought that that was okay because emails and now look at us Sarah Huckabee Sanders suggested 
that TBS cancels Samantha Bee's show because she called Ivanka Trump a cunt. Now, I'm going to repeat something. I saw this on the internet, and it was an apt description. Ivanka Trump can't be a cunt. She's not deep enough. You know what I'm saying? She's not deep and warm enough to be a cunt. No, but seriously. She's a cunt. She is a... Spoiled princess... Who... Whose father wants to have sexual intercourse with her. In some weird... Warped sense of reality they're in. Okay? She's a cunt. Sarah Huckabee Sanders says that TBS should cancel Samantha Bee's show. Actually, the White House demands that Samantha Bee's show gets canceled. Hold on. That's not how America works. I thought First Amendment, right? And now I know what you're going to say. You're going to clap back with, oh, well, Jay, you, you know, First Amendment, then why'd they fire Roseanne? That wasn't at her job. That was at her personal time. You can't be racist and post it online. <laughs> oh, Jay, you're all about the First Amendment unless it's... Unless it's Roseanne. Unless it's conservative, then you're not about it. Untrue? Untrue. So, I mean, listen. On Monday... We're going to get into the latest and not greatest. We got some stuff coming out of, uh, coming from Michael Avenatti. He is, the judge told him, we're, we're going to get into it on Monday, but there are tapes. There are, lordy, 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 there are tapes. Because Michael Cohen was recording his conversations unprivileged conversations for what reason I don't know but you know we're gonna get into Avenatti's latest you know motion in court what's going on with the tapes we're gonna get into remember T.S. Ellis that judge that was telling Robert Mueller that he wants to see the rest of the like that he wanted Paulie Paul, Paulie Walnuts that he wanted Paul Manafort just to sing. That's why he was bringing the financial crimes. We're going to find out what happened when Paul Manafort and, and the special counsel's team appeared in front of that, that judge again. <laughs> Pardon me. But let me tell you what I'm doing tomorrow. Tomorrow, here on Staten Island. That's right. I said it. North Texas. Staten Island. The March for Our Lives crew. Or the people responsible for it. They're coming. And you are invited to an important gathering, rally, and speak out. Saturday, June 2nd at 9.15 a.m. March for Our Lives, New York. The, on the steps of the Staten Island Borough Hall, 10 Richmond Terrace, across from the Staten Island Ferry Terminal. All supporters and sponsors are strongly encouraged to attend. Youth and adults, all ages are welcome and needed. You could visit the website MarchForOurLivesNY.com And after the rally, there will be many of us will be taking the ferry to join the NYC Youth Over Guns March, which takes place 12 to 5 over the Brooklyn Bridge. So tomorrow morning, wake up early. I will be live tweeting from the steps of Borough Hall with the March for Our Lives New York crew. And I will finally, I will finally get to meet some people who like, feel the same way about me, the same way as me, whereas I don't feel safe with automatic killing machines available for sale. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I would appreciate it. Listen, if you're going out there, look for the kid in the man bun. And if it's raining, I'm going to be wearing my hoodie that says protect kids, not guns. And if it's not raining, 
I'll probably be wearing a shirt that says your favorite band sucks on it with jporks.com on the back. I'm going to try to talk to some people. I'm going to try to take some pictures. Content, content, content. Content is king here on Least Coast Radio for the least heard voices. That's basically our preview for this week. So, I mean, are you ready? Are you ready for Monday? We got a big episode of the Jay Porks podcast coming up. And tomorrow we're at Borough Hall, Staten Island, marching for our lives. Jay Porks dies in your house. <laughs>